from the Casablanca Conference to India come high-ranking British and American officers to plan new blows against the Japs. Britain's General Sir Archibald Wavell, American Generals Stilwell, Arnold, and Somerville planning the strategy of the Far East. At a United States base in China, General Arnold, head of the Air Force, confers with the famous General Chenot, leader of the legendary Flying Tigers. Stopping off at Chongqing for talks with Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek, they inspect a guard of honor and are welcomed to the capital by China's Chief of Staff, General Ho Ying Chin. Then, back in Washington, their big army transport comes to Earth after its globe-girdling flight. United States Chief of Staff Marshall welcomes home his generals. The success of their mission will soon be felt by the enemy. It's summer in Australia, and the people of Melbourne, led by men of the Royal Australian Navy, paid tribute to new legions of Americans here to fight for the island continent. American nurses head the latest contingent from the States. To American sailors already here, they're like a message from home. United States fighting men from thousands of miles across the sea. Reinforcements for General MacArthur as he prepares to take the offensive against the Japs in the South Pacific. United States Army bombers taking off just before dawn upon a mission of mercy. The plane of an American general with 14 of his crew is missing somewhere in the South Pacific. For six days, searching parties scour the ocean, the shark-infested waters of the Coral Sea. Suddenly, an observer signals that he sighted something, a mere speck down upon the ocean. He's right. It's a tiny, crowded rubber life raft, and another. The Army bomber cannot land on water, so the happy crew radios for the Navy. In a matter of hours, two flying boats are on the spot. An Army Air Force cameraman records the dramatic rescue. Heavily loaded, the giant Navy flying boats head for home, all hands aboard safe and uninjured. Back at the base, sunburned, starved, and blistered, the general and his men are carried ashore. A chocolate bar, a can of sardines, and a seagull was all the 15 men had to eat for six long days. Happy ending to what might have been another tragedy of the sea. Engineers open the valves that will start petroleum rushing across the eastern United States at the rate of 300,000 barrels a day. Built as a war measure to relieve tankers needed for trans-ocean shipments, the giant pipe stretches from Texas to Illinois, 530 miles, an unbroken line of pipe long enough to connect Paris and Barcelona. United States tank cars loading oil direct from wells halfway across the American continent. The genius of the American automobile manufacturer, Henry Ford, turns to the mass production of gliders. Giant army transport gliders made almost entirely of spruce and plywood. Wings are fitted as the finished ships move along an assembly line that never stops.
pilots to man the new silent fleets of invasion craft are constantly training. Each glider built to carry a striking force of men fully equipped for battle. The nose lifts up and a scout car complete with crew is taken aboard. Towed by a transport, the glider goes aloft. 3,000 pounds of motorless aircraft taking to the sky on its own wings. A ship nearly as large as a medium bomber. The pilot releases his line, cutting loose from the tow plane, and he's on his own. for a perfect three-point landing. Cargo and transport gliders proving their efficiency as new, swift, silent weapons of invasion. <laughs> to historic Mount Vernon, once the home of America's George Washington, comes the sister-in-law of China's George Washington, Madame Chiang Kai-shek. Here with President and Mrs. Roosevelt, Madame Chiang places a wreath upon the tomb of America's first president. Simple, eloquent tribute from the First Lady of China. New York City gives Madame Chiang her first big public welcome to America. Thousands gathering at City Hall to cheer the American educated woman who has pledged with her husband to lead China to victory. Chinese Americans from all walks of life come to hear her and to do her honor. From City Hall, she visits New York's famous Chinatown just a few blocks away. Gala flag bedecked streets, signs of welcome greet her on all sides. Future generations of Chinese will be told for many years to come of the day Madame Chiang Kai-shek rode through the streets of New York and won the heart of all America with her courage and her charm. <laughs> Flying with British and American pilots in pursuit of Rommel's fleeing Nazi forces, an Allied cameraman records an actual air attack over the desert. Attacking by sea as well as by land. An Axis supply ship is sighted heading for Tunisia. One more cargo of supplies that will never reach the Nazis as death rains from the skies. 